talk insurance matters, especially because of the damage we've seen uh, from uh, the waves uh, over the past few days when we had those devastating waves along the east coast, uh, but big upon the eastern cape, western cape and parts of KZN. Uh, so it was the spring tides and now ferocious storms we're looking out for. It's been a rough year for South Africa weather-wise, hasn't it? What does it mean for your insurance and your premiums, of course, whether it's a private household or perhaps uh, business? Well, let's hear now from insurance expert. It's Christelle Coleman joining us, uh, is the CEO of uh, AMI Underwriting Managers as well. Christelle, good morning. Good to have you with us. Uh, it's been a long time since you and I spoke. So there's quite a lot I want to unpack. We want to get to business and private insurance in a second. But I don't imagine what we saw on the coastal areas is going to be covered by ordinary water damage. I don't think that's the case, is it? No, of course. Um, if you have insurance on your car or your home and your property has been damaged by the recent waves, you would absolutely have cover for it. You know, water, water damage, whether it's seawater or rainwater, is one of the basic perils of insurance. So um, if your premium's paid up and you've got a decent policy, you should have adequate insurance cover in that instance. Because oh, it's always a question when it comes to what is considered a natural disaster. Some will call it an act of, of God because this wouldn't happen uh, on a regular basis. Yes, your geezer at home or your geezer in your kitchen at a restaurant, well, that could burst. You may have to replace some plaster on a wall. But when we saw the kind of damage that we did with waves literally washing away uh, restaurants, how does an insurer mm -hmm. look at something like that? Well, if we talk about restaurants specifically and the one, you know, some of the, the, the ones that we saw on, on the news have had regular damage have, uh, occur over the years, uh, you might get to a point where insurers will say, listen, uh, this is not a sudden and unforeseen event anymore. We're seeing every season, uh, winter season, we're seeing damage. So you not, might not be able to insure it anymore going forward. Ooh. But if you have an insurance policy in place, um, and, um, you know, water damage is one of the most basic perils of insurance that you are covered against, unless an insurer has decided that ri that risk must be excluded going forward. You would have the cover, yeah, so, definitely. So basically, when you say that the risk needs to be excluded, it means that if you're going to keep your restaurant there, we're not going to insure you. I mean, it could be as simple as that. Yes. Um, yeah, and we've seen, you know, it's not just on oceanfront properties. We've also seen on some of the rivers over the years where um, maybe some of the properties have, built, have been built under the flood lines. That insurers will then come and say, we will cover you, but not against flood because it's not sudden and unforeseen anymore. It's becoming a regular occurrence. Um, and insurance is based on the principle of sudden and unforeseen events. So we are seeing around South Africa, certain areas are becoming more flood prone and that insurers are becoming more aware of that and excluding flood risk, one of the perils. For instance, you would still have cover against fire and, you know, mm. lightning and, and all the and, and burglary and accidental damage. But uh, typically then uh, the flood risk would be excluded. So it is something to keep in mind. If you're buying a waterfront property, if you're buying a business that's um, situated on a riverfront or on the ocean front, is to ask the seller, um, have they had issues with the insurance coverage in the past? Uh, because think about it, if you can't get insurance, you won't be able to get financing. You won't be able mm. to resell a property. It becomes a knock on effect. Uh, so that's the business side as far as owning a restaurant, because those are the yeah. visuals we were seeing, Christelle. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have those visuals mm -hmm. again. I want to talk about the cars uh, for a second. We saw the cars being washed away. Yes, we're always going to have cover for hail and theft and hijacking and all that. But uh, what happens in a situation where your vehicle has been parked in a parking lot, you come back and it's been washed away uh, by the sea? I mean, that has got to be uh, extremely unusual for an insurer. It is covered, you know, again, uh, those <laughs> really? incidents, if you have motor insurance and you have comprehensive insurance on your car, um, that is water damage, it would be covered. And also you must remember, I mean, I've seen many claims over the years, believe it or not, uh, where there's been salt water damage to, uh, to vehicles. Um, the, the damage isn't evident immediately. So often it only happens, you know, it, as you, as, because the water gets into all the little nooks and crannies. Um, and uh, you, the cars, sometimes the car looks like it's brand new, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's written off because they can't actually repair mm. the salt water damage. So, but then you need to have comprehensive insurance on your vehicle. And, um, you know, the only time where I can say where something like that would not be covered if someone is being silly and they're driving, you know, intentionally into, you know, into the water because they, you know, they're being, <laughs> they're being stupid. Yeah, they've got a four by four. They <laughs> think they can go beaching and it's not a very... Four, yes, and they're going, 
exactly that yeah. on a beach we're not allowed to do it and they go into the water <laughs> there might be an issue with that claim but these examples absolutely if you have comprehensive motor insurance your policy would cover that damage uh, this might sound like a stupid question and i'm not making light of the situation no. at all but when you when you say that uh, obviously the car can get evaluated for insurance purposes even if there's salt water damage and they will be writing it off what if you don't get your car back what if it's washed away and claimed by the sea how do you uh, go about trying to explain that to your insurer well, in, in this instance, we, we all saw the footage. So, you know, if you, can, if you can prove that your vehicle, whether you had a tracking device on it or, you know, the, the, you know we have to trust clients when they tell us what happens in, um, in a specific scenario and the car's washed away, absolutely would have insurance um, against that as well. Uh, so, but I do, um, Gareth, want to mention something to you. So it's very important, again, when you buy a second-hand vehicle, um, that you make sure that the car is properly checked out and that someone, because imagine the scenario now of someone having a car damaged by salt water, but they don't have insurance, they might want to try and sell that vehicle. Um, and then, then you end up buying a car that is um, that has got in, you know, serious damage to it. Uh, you won't be able to claim then from your insurance policy because theft under false pretenses mm. or damage under false, false pretenses is specifically excluded. So you know, any home, uh, car buyers out there, just make sure that you are that you do get checked, your car properly checked out before you buy it. Guys, it's actually good news. I thought we were going to get told that if you have a business at the beach no. and it gets washed away, they're not going to pay. If you parked your car, gets washed away by the sea, well, that's just bad luck. But luckily, we have Crystal Coleman joining us. I just say it's not the case. Thank but you. double check with your insurer. Crystal, always good to have you with us. Uh, CEO of uh, Ami Underwriting uh, Managers, taking us up very close to. Uh,